Notion is releasing a lot of updates all the time. And unless it's your job like mine to keep track of them 24 seven, it's quite easy to miss them. So in this video, we're going through 16 new updates over the last weeks that you probably missed. And we're diving right in with the first one, a cool new system-wide people database. We have been asking for something like this for a while, because basically whenever you use Notion as a team, you wanna have a people or employee directory. And having to build this manually every single time when you could just pull from the member of the workspaces seems a bit of a waste of time. So I'm very excited that we have some first steps in the direction. Now you can find the people database uh, first by checking whether it's enabled by going to settings and then general. And if you scroll here down to people, you see people directory enabled. Now you can then either go through members to find it or you can simply search uh, on your workspace by pressing command P and then looking for people. And then you will find this generic people uh, entry here. And this is where you find all the members of your workspace. Now, this is basically a Notion database, but generated from the system based on who actually is in your workspace. Here we see a filter down version of my company workspace, where I'm currently showing my two accounts, but my main one and then our consulting one. And we can see, we see, get the email, we get the name, and we get also the membership type. Now we can't change the membership type from here, right? We need to go into our workspace settings, but we can make any other kind of changes. So we can, just like with any other database, add any type of property, we can relate it to other properties, and we can, uh, you know, set different filters and views. This is also linkable elsewhere, right? So you can create a linked database view anywhere else in your system and pull from people in there. For example, right, if you link this to an org chart database, right, one where you might have your teams, you could relate that to the teams and then on your different team databases show who all works for that team. One of the main ways that we use these people databases with our clients, besides the obvious HR part, is to store additional automation information here. So for example, if we use Slack as well with that team, right, then we usually store the Slack ID to make sure that if something happens in Notion, we can ping that person in Slack. Or if someone wants to create a ticket from Slack in Notion, we can auto assign it to the right person. Lots of really cool advanced use cases. So having this database available anyway is a big step forward. Update number two is a new layout option for any card-based view. So for board views and galleries. Here, we can now go to our system settings, uh, database settings, then layout. And then you see here, we have now the option at the bottom to switch our card layout from the traditional list to a compact layout. And the main difference here is that this allows us to wrap properties differently. Let me just show you this, right? Let's uh, say we want to show the um, status. We wanna show the, I mean, status we don't need to show <laughs> on a board, but we wanna show the priority. Uh, maybe we wanna show the, uh, the area, right? And the owner. And currently, right, this means they all stack below each other on new lines, which can take up quite a lot of space. With the new layout option, we can now say, actually, we want this compact. And you see, if I click here, uh, in one second, it starts to now uh, stack horizontally rather than uh, vertically, which just opens up a lot of room. Even cooler, you can choose which of these should be displayed that way, right? So we might say, actually, yes, for area and priority, we want them next to each other. But the people, that is quite important. Well, we can go into the settings and then uh, for every single property, uh, we can turn on or off how they are displayed, right? So we can go here to style properties and then say, actually, um, I would like, you know, a certain uh, part to be uh, in line, right? So for example, the owner property, I would like that to be in line. That should always have a separate place, right? And that should always be uh, at the top um, of the list uh, in these cards, giving us kind of the best of both worlds. Again, this is available both on a board view and also if you switch from board to gallery views, meaning you can design these now a lot nicer. Another visibility update comes in the form of conditional color. As you know, we've had the option now for a while to apply conditional coloring, for example, saying, well, everything with the priority high, right? Or based on the priority, I would like to apply a certain color to this uh, or say, and only to, you know, the um, ones that have high priority. Previously, this only worked based on individual um, like standard properties. But now it also works in combination with formulas, which is really big because you can sort of create your own preconditions for coloring. 
For example, let's say we don't want to highlight every single thing that has high priority. We only want to uh, highlight high priority elements in the next week. Might be particularly useful if you look at a Kanban board, right? And want to see the one or two things that really need to happen next week. Well, now we can go in and we can create a formula for this, right? So let's go here, say um, formula, um, you know, call this highlight and then say, okay, we want here in this formula to highlight everything where two things are true, right? Where the priority uh, equals high and where sort of the um, the, the due date um, dot um, week equals the current week, right? So now dot week. And with this, we get a checkbox and only if both things are true, uh, will you know, the checkbox be ticked. So let's say we take this due date now to the current uh, week, right? That's a bit of an old database. Let's say it's here and we see now we have to highlight. We can now go back to our conditional color and replace this, right? Delete this and say, okay, I only want this to show when highlight um, is checked. And if it is checked, I want to highlight this as blue, right? Knowing that this is what I have to work on. Again, works with the conditional color across all database views and makes it really easy to create now these custom highlight functions in your setup. Update number four is a nice one for everyone who loves keyboard shortcuts. We get a bit of an easier navigation in databases. If you have now a property highlighted, you can simply press command and one of the arrow keys to jump either to the bottom of something, right? So to the last entry, to the one on the right, most and so on and so forth. And you can also uh, hit the command shift enter to mark all the properties in that row, right? Which just makes it a bit easier to highlight large parts of your database. Update number five is amazing if you use Notion in the browser. You can now install a new Chrome extension that automatically redirects every new tab that you open to a specific Notion page. And in there, you can then even choose which Notion page should open. For example, you can have it default to Notion AI. Now, personally, I prefer the desktop version because it's faster and more performant. But again, if you like using Notion in your browser, then this will be quite useful to make sure you always have the right page at your fingertips. Formula fans also get two new operators. We now have uh, in our formulas the option to use format number, right? So let's say we have 100 and then we call on that format, oops, format number in your option to output it pretty much any way you want it, right? This makes it much easier to give it specific codes, right? So you see if we have our um, overall format number, this is the basic explanation. So we can say, okay, we want this in USD, we want it with a certain number of uh, values after the comma, makes it just a bit easier to have full control over how um, number outputs are rendered. That's number one. And the second option is splice, right? So this is a really useful one to call on lists to remove certain elements from um, your array and manipulate a little bit easier. And if you don't quite know how to get started with Notion formulas, well, there are two great helps. First, Notion AI can now write formulas for you, which usually picks a little bit of a complicated way to achieve it, but it's a great starting point. Plus, I have an in-depth tutorial linked down below where you learn everything about Notion formulas and Notion automations. Update number seven is so big, it deserves its own video. And I have that linked down below. Notion has upgraded its API and we can now finally copy over the page content from one page to another much easier. This is mainly used to apply templates that you set up on your database, but you can actually input every individual page in your system. So for example, you might have some demo tasks somewhere, right? That outline, hey, here's how to do this. And then you can use the API to copy over that exact page content to another entry. Also a great way, by the way, to update um, page layouts right in your database in bulk. Because as you know, if you have a template and you update a template, that doesn't reapply automatically to old entries. But with this API change, you can now do that programmatically. Update number eight brings us into the world of Notion AI. And a lot of things have happened here. First up, you can now choose as one of your models the brand new Gemini 3 Pro, which performs extraordinary across the board. As you know, my general recommendation is to set uh, Notion AI always to Claude, much better than GPT 5.1. But Gemini Pro in my early tests is also getting close to it. It's particularly much faster than the other ones. So if speed is a concern, then would opt for this one. Uh, Right now, my tests with long complex workflows still favor Claude a little bit, but uh, I will do some more tests and then report back. Still very cool that we have this option here already. 
Update number two for Notion AI and update number eight overall is that sometimes you now see this edits checkbox. This is a new experiment from Notion to see how we can better scaffold what Notion AI does. If you uncheck that box, right, Notion AI cannot make any changes in your workspace. This is currently a feature though in A-B testing, so you see it in some workspaces, in some don't. Um, personally, I prefer just adding it to the prompt, right? Telling Notion AI explicitly whether I wanted to make changes or not, but it's interesting to see that they're playing around with this. Speaking of extended capabilities, Notion AI can now read page history on your pages, which is really useful. It's particularly good if you want to figure out, hey, what changes happened here on a certain page? You can, of course, always dig through them yourself, but particularly if it's a page, right, with a lot of changes, it might be quite hard to find a specific relevant one. Being able to simply ask Notion AI, you know, hey, um, when was the last time that XYZ was changed or what's the last change that uh, person Y did on this page helps quite a bit. And you can then even ask it to summarize these changes or show a previous version. So Notion AI has now access to page history. And the next update also has something to do with additional elements here. If we now uh, comment on pages, right? Uh, this is so cool. Uh, it can also be read by Notion AI. So if you ask it, uh, are there any comments uh, on this page? It will be able to read them. And more importantly, if you have a lot of comments, you can ask it to also, you know, summarize that. Uh, much more useful, of course, right, than just asking it to return. This is so cool. Update number 12 still sticking with Notion AI is about meeting notes. You can now also use meeting notes in the browser. As you can see, I am currently in the browser and while it still prompts me to open it in the Notion app, I can click on a dropdown and start it in browser. Now, very importantly, this only accesses your microphone audio. So it's good if you have in-person conversations or just want to speak into it, right? Kind of journaling with it, but it won't record your audio from a meeting. So a little bit careful here, right? To be honest, not entirely sure when I would have an in-person conversation and open my browser with Notion. Usually I would just do that via app, but good to know that it's there and that that is a very big limitation at the moment. A lot more useful is the new home for meeting notes. Uh, so you might have seen this right in your sidebar, you now have below home meetings, and this shows you all the AI meeting notes that you have in your workspace across the space, no matter in what sub page you have it. It also shows you if you connect your Notion calendar, your upcoming meetings, and you can start meeting notes from there. Makes it a bit easier to keep track of all of them. Of course, I would highly recommend that if you want a scalable Notion system, you create a meetings database. And in that meetings database, you have your AI meeting notes block as a template. That way you anyway always find <laughs> where you have your meeting notes. But in case you have a bit of a more scattered and less organized workspace, this helps sort of uh, as an intermediary step. So, would highly recommend right, that you create a proper infrastructure, particularly with AI getting better and better and requiring the right data architecture as a foundation. This is one of the main things that we do whenever we first work with a new client. We make sure you have the perfect scalable Notion architecture in place and we now put a very large emphasis on AI activation for your team so that you can make the most out of these new features, which in my opinion are like the biggest leverage to productivity that we've had in a long time. Update number 14 is another one for AI meeting notes, and that is that it now cites where it found something in your transcript. So if you have a long conversation and you look at the summary afterwards, you can, with just a little hover, similar to the way that AI also cites its sources when you ask it in the sidebar, uh, jump to the specific part where that was mentioned. Really useful if you want to read exactly what you know, was discussed at that point. Update number 15 is also for AI meeting notes, but this one happens in Notion Calendar. If you have different Notion workspaces connected, you now have the option to jump in and actually define per workspace where AI meeting notes should live, right? So if you have different default meeting databases, as you should, right, one per workspace, you can now easily set that here and then whenever you create a new meeting through Notion Calendar and add meeting notes to that, it will automatically add that entry to your database. You can even toggle on, right, that whenever you create a new meeting, it should automatically create a page for it. And to wrap up our Notion roundup for today, the Notion Slack AI connector is getting better as well. Previously, you were only able to have Notion AI search through public conversations. But now, if you reauthorize it and give it the proper permissions, it can also access your private DMs 
and closed channels, making it again a much more useful source for information. Keep in mind, of course, this is always done on a per user basis. So if you activate this, it doesn't mean that you can read the DMs of other people. This all stays scoped to your individual user permissions. So your Notion AI can now access your DMs. Now, I know there are always a lot of changes to Notion, which is why we have this running log on my website. Link down below, right? Just matthiasfrank.de slash Notion minus updates, where you can find all of these changes. We make sure we update them as soon as new changes are confirmed. So you have a one-stop shop where you see all these changes, right? Basically over the last year, there's so many things on here. So yeah, if you have ever any questions around Notion or wonder, well, is this of already an official update or maybe a small test that I'm seeing, this is the best place to go to. Now, if you are excited by all these AI updates, but don't quite know how to best use them, well, I've got you covered. We have a full blog article and a dedicated video on my six principles for structured prompting when it comes to Notion AI to help you improve the outputs a lot, particularly if you have long and complex tasks, right? Using Cloud 4.5 is just the first one. So just click here or on the other side for this next video, and I will see you in just a few seconds.